What's up guys? So today is the 14th of May 2017 and I just got home today from my Vegas trip and uh, as I said that in an earlier vlog so another one that I feel suddenly inspired to make particularly because I just looked at the transits and we have a T-square right now with the moon, Jupiter, and um, Venus in particular. So the moon is in within a conjunction with Pluto and that's in the second house of relationships others then we have Jupiter in the just teetering into the 11th house of friends and then in particular that we obviously have Venus should be in the fifth house yep oh it's close to the, it's close to the fifth house actually Jupiter's in the 10th house sorry so that would mean yeah okay so <laughs> yeah anyway so one thing in particular I was going to discuss is that um, throughout this week the first day I got there, up until at least the last day that I saw Curtis and uh, Chris, his boyfriend, um, I was constantly with Chris and Curtis, more or less. And that's actually half the reason why I didn't see them for the last day or so and why I'm no longer in speaking terms with them because they were being kid childish about it. And when I say childish, it's more or less that Chris guy in particular, he's been lying to Curtis his entire, the entire time he's known him apparently. And that's typical. Virgos love to do that. And even after I thoroughly laid him out, called him out on all the lies that he said, and even continued to, he continued to perpetuate this guilt that this is his fault, this is his fault, through the things that aren't even his fault. And I'm like, clearly you're deflecting guilt because you know that you were basically doing something fucked up. I felt maybe he was just repetitively like beating himself down because that's, you know, repetitions of Virgo Mercurial kind of thing. But in fact, it's because he continually was lying about other things, and then obviously it's not a huge fucking stretch for Curtis to lie about shit, or to deflect or play into the avoidant personality kind of mannerisms, more or less. So I'm going to tell you the truth about Virgos, but first and foremost, just to be, um, you know, two, bir two birds, one stone thing, I'm going to pull up that audio of me basically calling him out and him then admitting everything that he fucking said. So there is it basically a chart app, a PDF going on in the background, that's what that's about. I do turn it down a little bit and you can hear him, but if it seems like a little confusing. Oh, because it's like an opportunity. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I might also have to overcome some of your fears in order to fully embrace your circumstances. Right. Like, that's the entire I know, that's why, why I don't know. Which, by the way, the chart app that's going on in the background is actually Curtis's, elaborating on how he um, feels like he's being betrayed at this moment in time for this week and that he feels like he's being lied to and that he's starting to build up animosity towards a particular person that's close to him that he feels is deceiving him. And this is kind of what I used as like the conversation icebreaker to call him out on all the bullshit that he's been thinking for whatever reason that he was fooling me. I mean, Curtis is, has Mercury in his 12th house. That's pretty much like trying to get Neptune to do mercurial things. That one meme of that cat that looks high out of its mind is like, Neptune trying to do Mercury Mercury problems or whatever. It's like that. And Curtis can sense that there was something going on. Which is why I'm sure I thoroughly not only was able to pretty much do a bulletin list Virgo status, Virgo style, about everything he's lying about, but I was able to... <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'll just... Yeah. You're Virgo. Virgos are anxious. Let me go ahead and pause this. So when somebody, you know what's really funny? Apparently he used to be a detective or work for the police, which honestly with how, wow, he must have either been like barely a rookie or he's totally full of shit. You know, can you fucking stop? 
because he doesn't understand like interrogation or like interviewing 101. He's volunteering too much information, which is the telltale sign of him fabricating why he lied about it. And he's also saying that his mother died. And but then like later, not in this conversation, but later when we're talking about his chart and stuff, since he has Saturn in Scorpio in particular, he mentioned to me, I said, did your parents die? When, you know, the last three years between like 2011 and 2014? And he goes, yeah, they did, both of them. But he's saying right here in this that his mother died when he was young. And that's when he, that's why he thought that his birthday was in March. So apparently he's going through some sort of lawsuit right now where he's trying to actually hide himself from authorities in Washington, D.C. or some shit. Right. And so my first thing would be it would just make sense for me to lie about my birthday as well as my name or whatever else because then that would help cover me up. Why wouldn't you just say that is the reason and you just stuck with your story? It's because Virgos love to lie about stupid shit. He's not the first Virgo that lies about stupid shit. I once had a Virgo boyfriend who lied about if he was quote unquote related to someone or not. And in, in, in fact he was fucking her uh, behind my back and then he even got her to lie about it even though I guess he's into polyramus or poly polygamous kind of thing. And I wasn't. And we made that very clear in the beginning. But because I'm apparently the hotter chick or something, that's what I concluded. Because I saw her and I was like, ooh. Um, it made sense why he wanted to lie about that per se. And um, yeah, so it ended up, I ended up finding out eventually. And it's he was also, you know, basically arrested and being charged with murder. And I was essentially volunteering to be his character witness until I found out that not only was he cheating on me but he lied to me about that. Because he insulted my intelligence and lied to me about that, I provoked him, antagonized him through letters to the jail, and then I got him to admit that he isn't insane, because that's the kind of uh, defense he was trying to put forth. He isn't insane, in fact, he's a smart bastard and, th and he's gonna get away with everything because everybody always believes his fucking stories. Well, the prosecution attorney didn't believe that after I submitted the, the letters that were then certified that they came from the jail, so they came from him, to the prosecution, and um, they ended up basically squashing his entire insanity defense. So he took a plea deal of life in prison. And that's what he gets for lying to me. And then another one I dated. He kept continually lying to me about stupid shit, but then in particular he tried to lie to me about how he was going around and you know, trying to basically put in applications for jobs. And I'm like, right. And then he tried to tell me when I wanted to go to the rent fair with my friend Danny, said, no, you need to go to class. And of course I'm not going to listen. Rent fair's once a year. Hello, I don't care. So I went. He thought I was actually in class. My friend Danny happened to point out that he was with an ex-girlfriend at this renaissance fair. And not only did I almost rip all her hair out, but I broke his knee right there. And yeah. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Then another friend of mine, I wouldn't even call her friend, but I think she thinks we're still friends. Um, I, I have problems with people that are on the fence or like playing both sides, more or less, and Virgos love to do that kind of shit. She in particular loves to tell people that she was born in Sweden. I have no idea why. She doesn't look Swedish. She doesn't have a fucking Swedish accent. She has no passports or no documentation to prove that she ever came from Sweden. In fact, she was born in New Jersey. Most people don't know that about her, but since I've done her astrology chart and it took a while to actually get her correct location, she continued to give me a fake location in Sweden. And I just kept reading her chart and I'm like, does this sound like you? And she's like, no. And I'm like, it's because you're lying about some of your fucking information. She's not the first person to lie about that shit. So <laughs> the fact that it, Virgos just love to lie about details for the sake of, I don't even know. I don't even know. Because I could say I lie about details, but I have particular reasons why I lie about the details. And I, I make that known to anybody who actually knows the real truth about them. And, um, but my brother's looking for a social so he can give away his driver's license. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you how I knew that you that your birthday wasn't right. And I'm, so, I'm sorry for, for, always, for you doing that chart of this thing. But, 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 but that, and that's why, like, three years ago, I stopped even acknowledging my birthday. No, I know. I could tell when I when I was talking about astrology <laughs> um, before I even asked uh, before I even got your birth information. When no, I had, when I asked you, um, no, I'm just telling you, just so you know, just in case you're curious, yeah. that I find it interesting. 
Um, you think he should be curious, right? Because he should be a police officer. Not a, a detective or anything anymore. But when I asked you what sign you were, and you you sidestepped the question, I was like, ah, oh. he's hiding something. Oh. Why am I doing this? Because I, I I get to figure people out this way. I was like, and then I asked you what month you were born. You sidestepped the question, and I was like, huh. And I asked Chris, I'm like, haven't you given me his birth information before? He's like, yes, yeah, buried in your messages. And I'm like, well, fuck. Like, Everything okay. else, the city, the, the city, the day, the time, and I'm sorry for wasting your time. No, you're fine. You're full. Cool. But, but the, like, Georgetown Hospital, everything was true. So the date took me out and the time? The date was no. Yeah. Took too long doing it. March 20th and, 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 and the 3rd of September. And she, uh, <laughs> she got, she got cerebral palsy and I got the, I got the good genes. Yeah. Because you have, you have nervousness and what caused nervousness to me is I have a Virgo Mars. You talk shit about Virgos, so you're projecting. Jordan. You're projecting, yeah, you're, you're detest for Virgos. Pisces is your opposite sign, so you're also gonna have, uh, you, you're also gonna talk shit about Pisces. So you, you, uh, coincidentally talk shit about Alvin and you talk shit about, uh, Jordan. You admitted that you have similar nerves issues like I do, which is my Virgo thing. And then you also said you have narcolepsy and you have some other things that are neurological conditions, which will only be associated with people who are ruled by Mercury, so that would be either Gemini, or you'd be a Virgo. And since, uh, yeah, the other things kind of point to Virgo, that, that would explain that. And also, if you were a Gemini, you'd be more like Curtis to me in the bipolar kind of sense. Well, but, but and just, just, uh, if you ask... He's so fucking busted. Mm -hmm. Um, just last Saturday, mm -hmm. I had a really, really emotional day, like, to the point where I thought, like, and see, Curtis, if you actually watch this for any reason in particular, this is exactly how all those people that take advantage of you get you. This is exactly what he did to you, and I'm assuming this is exactly what he said to you. Because he tried to fucking play this goddamn fiddle with me. And fortunately for me, I don't fucking have sympathy or feelings or empathy for things like this. And I can see right through it anyway, even if I do. Or if I develop something later. Or if I allow myself to feel. He is... N trying to basically apologize, give me some half-ass bullshit reason as to why he did what he did, and now he's going to use some sort of emotional distress, poor sob story me, blah blah blah, feel bad for me, I'm a wounded fucking bird that fell out of the nest, story to justify why he uh, didn't make sense, why he's totally been out of it, and why he fabricated something that he didn't mean any harm by. While simultaneously the next day he completely lies right to my fucking face yet again. Showing that he doesn't fucking care. And then also another funny thing, when he first started talking to me, he was saying how Curtis isn't empathetic, and I'm like, Curtis is very empathetic. Just because um, you can't see it per se, because his son essentially is in his 12th house as well, so his self-expression is, is diminished. He is very um, emotional. Uh, and then, it, you know, Chris kept going on about saying how he's not emotional either. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you you take things too personally to not be emotional. I wasn't like in the bathroom like I'm gonna be a razor, but like I haven't I haven't cried in like three years because yeah. I haven't let myself because. But then he cried last Sunday Saturday. So just it doesn't like life doesn't make sense to me anymore. So he did yeah, he never really cries he never cries but he just randomly cried in the bathroom, but not to the point where he's gonna cut himself with razors, but cried enough because shit doesn't make sense anymore, but he doesn't have a particular reason as to why he cried. And if shit doesn't make sense anymore, how come he hasn't continually cried? It, only that one time. Is it was because the day that I was basically calling him out on stuff? Yeah, pretty much. And that feeling went away when... Oh, isn't that crazy? At, at first, it went away with, with him through the shit I was getting. Mm -hmm. And then just being around him, mm -hmm. and then I. But, but part of the reason that I got like so upset last week was just um I don't know if I'm not um thank you mm -hmm. uh, and thank you for for uh not calling me out like an asshole because you had been receptive to this. <laughs> yeah no well no I I told her flat out I said I said um uh, because he he you know has the kind of, you know, gut issue that you're hiding something. And, and, and I wasn't, that's, that's, why, that's why I got, I got, so, like, I was, I was already upset, like, I was having, like, I, mm -hmm. I hadn't cried in three years, like, the floodgates were open, but, like, that part, that, the fact that I was, like, holding something back, and I hate. 
I'll have to say from personal experience, since all of a sudden I've, I've pulled like feelings out of some freaking dark abyss as of late, I would say like in the last maybe few months or so, um, I haven't just like bawled my eyes out the floodgates and it just stopped. Unfortunately, it has happened a couple more times since then. And I'm definitely finding it a little bit more challenging to hold myself back emotionally per se, not with anger, but just with, you know, basically venting and, and being emotional in general, cry, tears, whatever. So I find it interesting that now that I actually understand that side of the spectrum with feelings and getting upset, how somebody can sit there and say that the floodgates just opened and then the feelings just went away. I don't, I, wow, wow. Like after being in the closet and everything, and something so stupid as, as like, up front, man, it's just, just. Did I hear something? No. Just look for the people. Don't open that. He's not the first gay friend of mine well, no, that's vented me about so coming yeah, out either. Just, the opportunity has arose. Okay. Um, the, the one thing that he was telling me that he's just, he's wondering what you're doing. How come it takes you so long to go to the store? Because I have a gambling addiction. Oh, okay. Alright, well, cool. That's that's a lot better than, um, yeah. that's a So interestingly enough, I didn't actually get to confront him about this because I let him talk. And I was basically calling him out trying try to figure out what else it was. Curtis and I and him went to the Sam's Town Casino uh, one, I think it was like late, late in the middle of the night. We happened to go, and it happened to be on Saturday. And in particular, um, I, I'm, I know that Saturday is ruled by Saturn, and Saturn being a, a Scrooge, more or less, it's not a very good day to gamble, unless you happen to be, you have to have something really weird in your chart or whatever. So... We go, and we're not doing that great. I don't like to lose a lot of money. I lost like 20 bucks or whatever. And Curtis, you know, even Curtis usually does really well. He was losing a lot too. In particular, this is when I still thought he was an Aries or whatever, because this was right when I arrived. Um, because I have my, my Aries friend that I've gone gambling with before, and because Uranus is an Aries and it's been conjunct with Jupiter, well not Jupiter, sorry, with, it's been conjunct with Mercury and all that, um, I noticed that she's been a little bit more lucky with gambling. And in particular, um, I've notice that if I'm not the one that chooses the machine, like I just inconveniently pick the machine next to my friends to just stay with them, that I have a higher probability and in fact I've proven over and over again um, that I actually am winning more often than not on those machines than if I were to just randomly pick one that I liked. So I felt, I'm like, well he's an Aries, I should go gamble next to him and see if there's any kind of difference or correlation between, Nino can you stop? Between him and my, Air my other Aries friend. So I actually went and searched for him throughout the casino and could not find him. He told Curtis that he's upstairs gambling. But since I moved from machine to machine so much, I actually went through the entire place and I sweeped the whole thing. And since it was the middle of the night and there was barely anybody there because it's a local casino more or less, I couldn't find him anywhere. There were only like four people upstairs and two of them were fat ladies and another like two guys that were smoking cigarettes and it wasn't him. And Curtis was in the front area down by where we came in and then I was playing in the other part of the area where there was this lady screaming like like bloody murder and being a crazy bitch throughout the entire fucking casino so everybody and their mom including security was watching all this and they they had a head count of everybody that was over there he wasn't actually there in fact when me and Curtis gave up on gambling we went to Dunkin Donuts and I said interesting he's not upstairs gambling so I told Curtis I was like Curtis don't say that we're done or anything just tell him that we're continuing to gamble and then he randomly messaged Curtis and said, I'm going to go to the car and get your waters. Because he bought us waters before we went into the casino. And then coincidentally needed to go and get them. So we're standing at the machines close to the front door after we already got coffee. We're done gambling. He thinks that we're still gambling. And I see out of the corner of my eye somebody running towards the front doors of the casino. And I look out of the corner of my eye and I'm like, huh, I didn't want to look, look over there. But then I see him come in through the front doors and he was the only one that came in. Like, interesting. Why did he run? And yeah, then he brings in Curtis's water. I'm like, okay. So then we happen to leave. And yeah, so we walk out there. 
and he's kind of just jumping up and down kind of trying to be a distraction or something is that how I was taking that and then he just decides to randomly race one of us to the car which me and Curtis aren't running there's a Mountain Dew bottle on the trunk not only that he grabs that and he's like oh and I said is that your Mountain Dew bottle over there he said oh yeah I forgot it and I'm like weird because he had a fountain drink when we went to the store because when we bought those water bottles and stuff I was trying to buy my own being a responsible you know person that likes to take care of my own shit and I grabbed my own water bottle and he grabbed it for me and says no don't worry I'll get it and I watched him he had a water bottle for Curtis a water bottle for me and he had a fountain soda he did not get that 20 ounce or whatever bottle of Mountain Dew so where did that come from and then when we got in the car because I have dresses and stuff I didn't want to sit on anything gross and Curtis has is kind of notorious for either having people around that, that put shit in horrible places or him himself. So I had already cleaned off the front seat because it's a two-door car. And I sat there before. I go to open the door and he's opening it for me. He's trying to tilt the seat forward. I notice that there's receipts and there's like miscellaneous things on the seat that were not there before. And technically I was the last one sitting in that seat. Unless somebody used the car. And there was receipts and an envelope for something and then some candy. And he just swiftly just picked it up and then put it on the ground in the back seat. And then jumped in as if he didn't think I saw that. And I was like, really? So if you have a gambling addiction and that's why you're always gone with the car. And making up other reasons why you're gone. Why did you borrow the car then? And if you had a gambling addiction, how come you weren't in there taking advantage of that and gambling? And then he also has like this free players book for like Fremont Street. It's rather full because he was offering me quite a few of the tickets, like $10 plays or whatever like that. If you had a gambling addiction, why don't you have like a palenthra of those books and how come you don't really have that many tickets and they're missing? Yeah. A lot better than that. Well, he wouldn't even care about that. It was a lot better than what he was probably speculating. He was assuming that you're uh, having sex with other people. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. I was in, I, there's a Starbucks at Sunset Station. Yeah. Um. And he is actually, which uh, it's evident because Curtis mentioned something to me that just makes sense. They haven't. They, you know, I guess haven't been too intimate yet. And um, the way that he stuttered and shit, I honestly am starting to think that he never was a police officer at all. And if he was. I don't know how he made it through the academy or whatever. And even if he did, how the fuck did he make it through the academy and not and sit still long enough to actually pass everything? Because he can barely sit still for anything. Uh. That's cool. You don't have to explain any further than that, but I mean. I, I have a gambling addiction. Yeah, because we've we've timed. I have a gambling uh, well, addiction. Not we. Um, when he's when he's mentioned, he's like, well, it was more or less me at first. I kind of just said like, wow, damn. I was like, he. He went a lot. He took a forever to go to the gas station. I was like, and it wasn't even so much that I was being nosy. I was like, dude, I wanted my squirt. Right. He asked me cool. if I wanted anything. I was like, I wanted my fucking squirt. And I was like, damn, I'm going to go get my own squirt now. And then he's like, well, just wait. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, he's been gone for like 20, 30 minutes. And he's like, bitch, you can't even fucking keep track of how, what, like, what day it is sometimes. How do you know what time it is? I'm like, um, I, what? So I'm like, I'm going to go get my own squirt. Fuck this shit. And then the next time that you, you took off, and I'm like, Hold on, I'm gonna time this shit. And I was like, this is fucked up. So I timed it, and you said you went right to the store, and you were gone an hour and 30 minutes. Oh, uh, then you guys went to the, the freezer? As the, as the cannery? Yeah, yeah. What, and, I, what? And, I, and, I, and I went there. I asked Volunteering too much cigarettes. information, buddy. I got the two letters. Um, I went to Eastside Cannery, and then didn't come back with socks because I didn't go to Walmart. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, and I'm, the, I'm, I'm not. On my parents' lives. Um, you know, Curtis wouldn't dead. even care. <laughs> Curtis, Curtis is gonna laugh about this because he wouldn't even care. Because worst thing he was thinking is that um, that you're lying about everything about who you are just to be an asshole, and that um, no. and that you're cheating on him. No, no, no. I yeah, that's. I, I swear, I swear. And I guarantee you, that's what he's thinking, and that's what he wants to be upset about today. So if you actually listen to this, it'll probably yeah. Better watch. I'll listen to all this. So now you're totally prepared to talk to him. 
Yeah. Which will probably give him the best birthday present ever. Tracity, when you clear everything up and he doesn't work. feel like he's being trapped. You work in work. Trap. That's the main nine. Two thousand and seventeen. Yeah. And that's why I just was like. And seventeen. Leaving May nineteenth. Well, I didn't like. I, I told him flat out. I was like, I've already made it clear. I, I, I know that I've given some hints yeah. to it that I already configured like that. I was like, I was like, don't worry, give me a week. I was like, I'm not going to figure it out. To achieve my goal. <laughs> And uh, the time might not yet be right for it action. Is, just, it is what it said right then to use this like time for contemplation. Like the opportunity was right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I, I'm not really offended because I don't have feelings. And then secondly, um, yeah, no, nobody knows a lot of information about me. Um, yeah, I've just got divorced. So nobody knows that I've been married. And all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, I, I, I'm the last person to ever get mad at somebody for like hiding stuff about their identity. Um, and Curtis won't really either, because Curtis, I mean, is kind of in that same boat too. He doesn't um, really hide his identity, but yeah, but I'll play this now. So, I mean, so in particular, it's really unfortunate for him that he decided to lie. I'm gonna fucking beat your ass. Your cancer video's next, bitch. Shut up. You're not getting any fucking cake, you fat ass cancer. God. Fucking selfish. They're always selfish. Sorry, it's a T square with the moon in it, whatever. I mean, it's it's me, but that's fueling it. I can be a bitch, and it's definitely working in that favor right now. <laughs> but anyway, Virgos, <laughs> well, what was I saying? He picked the wrong birth date to fabricate because um, he picked just short of um, nine days before the one of my friends that I'm constantly around the most, my Aries friend. So, and then also me being a Libra, I have a lot of Aries qualities because of the polarity phenomenon. So, and the fact that Virgos in particular, I've had such a problem with Virgos throughout my life. Like a consistent problem. Which would make sense Virgo-Mars. Mars has to do with com combative or, you know, conflict. And Virgo, you know, that's the archetype there. So that makes sense. I wonder if that's a correlating kind of signature I should be aware of. Could probably test that theory later at some point or another and see but I was able to pinpoint just from what he says he has um, medically the medications he's taking his mannerisms his quirks and behavior and um, just hearing him talk about like his life story and stuff and him not even realizing that he's already told me when his parents died they didn't die when he was little and that also he keeps saying uh, he swears on his parents lives when he's telling me the truth. Like, your parents are already dead, dude. Wow. You know what's really funny, too? He subscribed to my YouTube channel before all this bullshit transpired. And another funny thing is that even though Curtis thoroughly knew about all of this, and Curtis doesn't seem to think that lying is consistently an issue, a red flag, because Curtis also, you know, he, he's Curtis has at least caught on to not lie to me as much. He just does what he usually does, does the avoidant thing. But even at the moment, I was still continually like, dr like grilling this into him that they should just be up front with me. All they had to do was say, hey, you know, I know that you're hearing everything, but, and I already told Curtis before I kind of wanted to go hang out with other people or whatever like that. I just need to know when. Curtis came out and told me that we're gonna go bowling. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then he randomly goes in the room, shuts the door, and he's in there for a little lengthy time. And then they come out and all of a sudden they've worked out their problems to uh, way better than they, they had been the entire week I'd been there. And all of a sudden now Chris is having a crisis and he needs to go over to his friend Kevin's house. First off, Curtis never gives me names about where he's going. And that guy barely gives me any information at, at all, unless he's trying to lie and cover up something. Curtis intentionally didn't take his duffel bag with him that has his laptop in it. Yet if you went into his room that he, you know, I can go in there because the bathroom's in there. His laptop and everything was gone. He thought that because I would notice that he took his laptop case that he's going to be gone for a lengthy period of time. I already knew for the fact that he had to, um, kind of take a pause for a second to explain to me what's going on that he was going to be gone for more than a, like five minutes. And also when I asked Chris how he's doing, how's it going, I was just saying like, are you okay? 
Because, I mean, he genuinely, when I was in distress about having issues with my electronics or whatever, he was genuinely trying to seem like he cared. So I was just trying to be, uh, reciprocate the, the gesture. Not because I actually gave a fuck. Yeah. Psychopathic, hello. And when I tried to reciprocate that, he was like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Shh, it's okay. And then Curtis even tried to basically say that, where is it? Okay, time out. If this seems a little abrupt at the end of the last clip, I started to spill over and make this a huge venting therapeutic thing, talking about, you know, the particular um, part that Curtis played in this. And although, yes, it was therapeutic more or less for me, um, it's kind of spilling over. And in fact, I haven't done the Truth About Taurus video yet. And a lot of the bullshit that kind of Curtis, uh, you know, is notorious for leading people on and stuff, or, or he doesn't necessarily fabricate things too much because his Mercury's in his 12th house, so he doesn't articulate it much. But what he insinuates is the same kind of fabricated stuff that um, a lot of Tauruses I know actually do. I would say excluding Ross, because Ross is... I'd have to actually look, but Ross I think is too much Gemini to give a fuck, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I have a Taurus cousin... And I uh, know thoroughly actually some Tauruses because I have quite a few uh, kids in care that are Tauruses. That um, bullshits their middle name. So I, actually instead of letting this drag on, I'm just going to end this here. So the gist about Virgos, if you didn't get it from kind of his commentary, um, they, they tend to try to... They seem to think that because they're very good with details that they can just change little details and people won't catch on. But yet they're so fixated on the detail that they change that they don't understand that that completely warps the entire storyline. And that's the issue they have. And another thing. Virgos are supposedly supposed to be notorious for work and service. I don't think so. Just because they're they're content with doing the mundane stuff does not mean that they are ded a dedicated person to work and service. Somebody who's dedicated to something doesn't have to bitch and nag and act like a catty whatever while doing every single mundane task along the way. They also don't um, find little nitpick things to then hold against people and or criticize them per se during their quote unquote devoted work and service. They're also supposed to be the ones that give, give, and give. Um, they only give, give, and give as much as they, they tally up how much they're allowed to give, give, and give. Which usually isn't that much give, give, and give since they're more of a consolidating um, frugal sort of archetype in general. So there's a huge facade with them being meticulous and them being dedicated to work. It's more or less they're just obsessed with stuff. And they just feel pressured to do certain things. Or they pressure themselves. Or they're completely hiding behind irrelevant details to where they then feel pressured and obligated to succumb to whatever anybody else wants them to do because they feel fucking guilty for saying and doing or whatever they're claiming that they are doing. So that's the truth about Virgos. And my fucking fat ass cancer cat that's not getting my chocolate cake. Ugh.